and it goes out one day as a ship passes on the horizon. So Ralph becomes furious at Jack, humiliating Jack again, of course, for letting the fire go out, and their rescue chance is gone. But pretty soon it becomes apparent that Jack isn't very interested in rescue at all. Um, after a while, Jack decides to, it almost has a fight with Ralph, a physical fight. I guess they do have a little bit of a fight. And Jack goes off to the end of the island where there are some, a pile of rocks, big, huge boulders, caves, and Jack lives there in shelter. He lives like a general. He li lives like a North Korean general, uh, let's say, uh, or a Kim Jong-il, if you like. Uh, and many of the boys uh, join him there. Jack is a sadist. Jack likes to inflict pain. Uh, Jack is a sadist. That is, he loves to, he loves power, and like the leaders of 1984, uh, people who love power like to inflict pain. Uh, that's how they feel they have their power. That's what O'Brien says in 1984. Uh, Roger is his right-hand man, and Roger is a real sadist. He's a scary guy. He's an SS, if we know the Hitler thing, he's a Himmler. Himmler was the head of the SS, uh, a sadistic, cruel man. Um, so, they torture guys whenever they feel like it, uh, and they love it, and, uh, the guys submit, uh, maybe they kind of like being tortured in some ways. Um, not too serious, but serious enough. Okay. Um, but as soon as they get to their part of the island, they discover, wait, how are we going to build a fire? Well, how did they build fire? the fire originally up on the hill? Piggy's glasses. They used Piggy's glasses to set the fire originally on the hill. Well, now that Jack has left with his friends, they need a fire. So in the night, one night, they raid the hut in which Piggy and Ralph are sleeping, and uh, Simon. Uh, there's a fight in the dark. People are hitting each other. Uh, people are screaming. And then the raiders disappear. Ralph is feeling pretty good about things. He hit one boy pretty well, he says. But then the revelation. They have Piggy's glasses. Oh, no, no, I'm telling this wrong. Earlier, Ralph had slapped Piggy, slapped the glasses off. One of the lenses had shattered. So Piggy still had only one eye, one lens, to his glasses. Ralph, uh, Piggy had only one lens left. And that's what was lost in the night, in that night raid. So now Piggy is virtually blind, needs Ralph and Ralph's protection. All along, Piggy has needed Ralph. Jack hates Piggy more even than he hates Ralph. Why? Passion, the will to power, hates reason, hates moderation, uh, of course. So R Jack hates Piggy, and now Piggy is virtually worthless no glasses. So, um, we get the one scene in which Simon becomes so important. Simon is the kind of guy who likes to go off into the wilderness alone and sit and think. Now, when Ralph first, uh, when uh, Jack first killed a pig, ah, forgot this, the boys are convinced that on the island there is a beast capital B, some mysterious, supernatural, terrifying beast, uh, which they're all afraid of, even Jack. Well, this is Golding's comment on superstition, how superstition works. Now, uh, when they first kill um, a, a pig, they cut off the head of the pig, put the head on a stake, on a post of wood and put it in the woods uh, as a kind of offering to the beast. Well, this is primitive religion right here. Primitive religion. 
uh, to appease the beast, uh, to propitiate the beast, to ask the beast to show them mercy. Okay. Now, Simon is fascinated by this process and sometimes spends hours in the wet, humid, uh, dank forest uh, looking at the beast, looking straight at the beast and talking with the beast, trying to understand what this beast is. Uh, and then one day uh, he conver has a conversation with the beast. The beast, by the way, the title Lord of the Flies, the Lord of the Flies is Beelzebub. Uh, Beelzebub is one of the one of the assistants of Lucifer, Satan. Beelzebub's name means Lord of the Flies. So, Lord of the Flies is a novel that is ultimately about evil. It's an analysis of evil. Um, so, the only person in the novel capable of understanding uh, evil is Simon. Simon is so deep, he is so such a remarkable character. He's a mystic, actually. He's a mystic. He goes and communes with this pig's head, flies all around it, of course, this pig's head, blood dripping, flies everywhere. Flies land on, on Simon, too, as he sits there, the perspiration dripping from his face, but he pays no attention to the flies, just staring into the eyes of the pig. And he stares and stares until he understands. Uh, he has a kind of illumination. Uh, and really the illumination is that uh, the Lord of the Flies, that the source of evil, is in man. Not nowhere else. There is no supernatural evil in the universe. It's only man. But he's got more to find out. He explores the island again, and he goes up on the hill where they first thought they saw the beast. The wind is, there's always often a breeze, and he hears this knocking sound, knocking sound, and he realizes he's near the place where the plane landed. And he goes nearer to the sound, and what the sound is, is a parachute. The pilot the pilot, or maybe another man in the plane, had parachuted out of the plane when the plane was going down. But the parachute had caught, got caught in a tree, and the man, probably injured, perhaps unconscious, in any case, died in the parachute. And so there is a rotten corpse in that parachute. Terrible, disgusting thing. That was the beast. And uh, the wind was blowing this now much depleted corpse, much later than it was before, uh, and that is the sound that was created, that created that bumping sound. Simon goes straight to this, looks straight at it, and understands everything now. He understands that there is no beast, that the beast is man. Uh, if man can only confront his own beastliness, uh, but uh, Golding, I think, has no hope for that, because here's what happens. This has been a long day for Simon, and now it's dark. Meanwhile, in Ralph, in uh, Jack's camp, they are performing a ceremony. Uh, by the way, a storm, the wind was blowing, as I told you, a storm has come, a tropical storm. Tropical storms are scary. High winds, Lightning, thunder, very scary. Resounding, deafening thunder, a scary night. And so at Jack's camp, they have had a kind of feast. They even invited Ralph and Piggy. So Ralph and Piggy are there. Uh, Ralph and Piggy have eaten some of the pig too. Nice of Jack to let them. Uh, and the storm has begun, and the boys suddenly start dancing and howling, dancing. It's just like tribal, some African tribe or some prehistoric 
form of life, uh, some religious ceremony to ward off the gods' anger, to propitiate the gods. Once again, I keep using that word. Scary scene then. Lightning, thunder, wind, uh, the boys dancing. Oh, the warriors all wear paint on their faces. Uh, Golding says this is to cover up, their, to dehumanize them. They hide behind that paint so they can do things, terrible things, that they would otherwise be too ashamed or embarrassed to do. Interesting. Violent scene. Suddenly, in the middle of this scene, through the trees, comes Simon. This is the real climax of the book, perhaps. The first, anyway. A terrible, haunting scene. Ralph and Piggy, by the way, well, Ralph, at least, is in the dance, too. Through the trees comes little Simon, shouting, trying to tell them something. But in the kind of group hysteria, they start hitting him and beating him and kicking him. And they don't even know why. Kill the beast, kill the beast, kill the beast, they're saying. And they are making Simon the beast, a kind of human sacrifice, if you like. But they're not even thinking. They're yielding to their passions, the passion of the moment. And here's Simon trying to tell them that there is no beast, that they have nothing to fear except what they themselves are. Well, a terrible, painful scene then. Uh, the other end result, Simon is dead. Simon is dead. He staggers with his last life, he staggers, I think, into the ocean water which is nearby. Fall, no, it maybe falls off, I don't know. His body falls into the ocean. He's dead. This is a terrible, terrible scene. And Ralph and even maybe Piggy participated in it. Uh, no one is innocent there. It's a terrible example of uh, perhaps uh, what happens sometimes, so what we do to our prophets. Um, very interesting. Ralph and Piggy go back, um, then they, I don't remember the sequence now suddenly, but uh, Simon is dead, terrible Simon, and every once in a while Ralph would say, remember Simon, poor Simon, and Piggy would say, shut up, don't think about it. This is reason, reason, reason has its limitations, uh, reason is not very compassionate, reason does not have a very bad conscience because it's so irrational is not conscious of sin, of guilt. In fact, reason tries to cover these things up. Reason is a limited faculty, uh, severely limited. Uh, reason is not deeply spiritual, after all. In fact, Piggy never liked Simon. Simon respected Piggy, but Piggy didn't like Simon. He didn't trust Simon. And that's interesting, too. Um, finally, in the second uh, climax, Ralph and Piggy go to the camp uh, to, I don't know what, demand Piggy's glass, his one lens back or something. Um, by now, the camp is like a fortress. It has guards, everybody has a spear, they all wear their paint. They have become savages. Uh, and so Ralph and Piggy approach, uh, but high up above the camp, there is a guard up there, and there are all these big boulders, these big, these big rocks around. Uh, at a certain point, Ralph and Piggy, uh, uh, Ralph and Jack start to fight again. They hate each other, after all. Uh, and we hear a kind of sound, like a sound of earth moving, and suddenly a big boulder, as big as this room, I would think, comes tumbling down, hits Piggy directly, kills him immediately, and Piggy's body is pushed by the rolling thing, or falls into the water nearby. Uh, the end of Piggy.